Made using the Pretty Alpine Stitch, this crochet summer top is a quick and easy project perfect for any skill level. Hey friends, I'm super excited to share with you this elegant crochet top that's so easy to make, making it the perfect summer top great for any beginners. Whether you're dressing up for a night out or keeping it casual for a day in the sun, however you choose it, this top has got you covered. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Shaz, and if you like to receive free crochet patterns and crochet tips, all you gotta do is subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. Now before we start, you'll need any category 3 yarn. Here I'm using a 24 by 7 cotton yarn by Lion Brand in the color Desert Lily, hence the name, and a 4 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need some stitch markers, a tape measure, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. For this pattern, we'll be working from the top down and to start, we'll need the width of half our chest circumference plus about 1 to 2 inches for ease. Here I'm making a size small and I'll be doing 79 chains. Just ensure you have an odd number of total chains. And for all the other sizes, you can get them in the link below. Once you've completed all your chains, we'll go ahead and start on the first row. Now I'll place my thumb on that last chain and I'll work another chain to start the next row. I'll yarn over, insert my hook into the second chain from my hook, I'll draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all loops. This will be my first half double crochet stitch. I'll continue to work half double crochet stitches into each chain all the way across. Once you've completed all your half double crochet stitches, you'll chain one and turn your work. Now for the next row, we'll be working single crochet stitches into every stitch. So you insert your hook into the first stitch, not the turning chain, and you'll work your single crochet stitch. You'll work single crochet stitches all the way across. And once you've reached that last stitch, you'll chain one and turn your work. Now for the next row, we'll be working on our alpine stitch. Now for the first stitch, we'll always work a half double crochet stitch no matter what. So we'll have our half double crochet stitch. Our next stitch will be a front post double crochet stitch. You'll find that second half double crochet stitch on the previous row. This will be the half double crochet row below the single crochet row and you'll yarn over, you'll insert your hook behind and through the post stitch of that half double crochet stitch. You'll drop a loop, make sure to pull it high, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all loops. And that will be our second stitch. For the third stitch, go ahead and find that third stitch on a single crochet row and work a half double crochet stitch. You'll yarn over, insert your hook, You'll drop a loop, yarn over and pull through all loops. Now for the next stitch, we'll work a front post double crochet stitch again. So go ahead and find the next post on the half double crochet row. You'll yarn over, you'll insert your hook behind and through the next post. You'll drop a loop and work a double crochet stitch. Now you'll basically just be repeating the half double crochet stitch on the single crochet row and the front post double crochet stitch on the half double crochet row. You'll alternate between these two stitches all the way across and I'll meet you back here at the end of this row. On your third last stitch, your third last stitch should be a half double crochet stitch and your second last stitch should be a front post double crochet stitch. And your last stitch should always be a half double crochet stitch. And this is our first alpine row completed. Now for the next row, 
you'll chain one, turn your work, and we'll work another row of single crochet stitches all the way across. On your last stitch, you'll chain one and turn your work. Now for the fourth row, we'll be working the alpine stitches just like how we did on the second row, but this time in the opposite order. We'll first start with a half double crochet stitch into that first stitch. Now for the second stitch, we'll look at the stitch below it and work the opposite stitch. So here we have the front post double crochet stitch. That means I'll work another half double crochet stitch into that second stitch. For the third stitch, I see a half double crochet stitch. That means I'll be working a front post double crochet stitch through the post of that half double crochet stitch. Now that you can see the order of how we work the alpine stitch, you'll continue to rotate between these two stitches all the way across and I'll meet you back here once you've reached the third last stitch. Here I'm at my third last stitch and my fourth last stitch was a half double crochet. My next stitch will be a front post double crochet stitch followed by a half double crochet stitch above the previous front post double crochet stitch. And because we'll always start and end with a half double crochet, go ahead and work a half double crochet into that last stitch. And that is basically how we work the alpine stitch. You'll continue to repeat the last two rows of one single crochet stitch row followed by the alpine stitch row. And always remember to start and end each row with a half double crochet stitch no matter what stitch is below it. And you'll continue to work the opposite stitch along the alpine row. For size small, I'll be working a total of 44 rows, so go ahead and work the number of rows to fit the length that you need. Once you've completed all your rows, make sure to end your last row in a single crochet row. Now go ahead and make a second piece. Once you've completed your second piece, do not bind off just yet. You can go ahead and place a stitch marker on your last stitch and you'll take the second piece, placing it on top of the first piece making sure that both pieces are facing the wrong side up and the top rows are on the same side. Now with your tape measure, you'll measure the arm opening from the top row down. For size small, I'll measure seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters and place a stitch marker to mark that spot. I'll also place several more stitch markers along the sides to secure both pieces together. Now for my last stitch, I'll remove that last stitch marker and from here, I'll insert my hook into both pieces through that first row and work a single crochet stitch. You'll work single crochet stitches loosely and evenly across until you've reached the stitch marker for the underarm portion. And on your last stitch, you'll work your last single crochet stitch, chain one to secure and bind off. Now you'll just repeat the same thing on the other side and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Once both sides are seamed up, we'll move on to seaming the shoulder. For size small, I've measured four inches or 10 centimeters from the side and I've placed a stitch marker on each end. You'll do the same thing on the other side. Now just like before, we'll insert a hook into the first stitch of both pieces We'll take our yarn and drop a loop. Make sure to carry any excess tail and you'll work a single crochet into each stitch of both pieces all the way across until the next stitch marker.
and once you're at the stitch marker, you'll just chain one to secure and bind off. Now go ahead and do the same thing on the other shoulder. Once you've completed seaming up the shoulders, we'll turn our work right side out and we'll be working on the neckline. Now to tidy up the neckline and make it look a little bit more polished, we'll insert a hook along the seam side. We'll drop a loop and we'll chain one to secure. To start our first row, we'll be working single crochet stitches on each stitch. And don't forget to work along any excess tail. So you'll work your single crochet stitches while ensuring that your stitches are not too tight. And we'll do this all the way in the round. And once you've worked your way all the way in the round, you'll find that first stitch that you made and work a slip stitch. Chain one to secure. Now for the next round, we'll be working a double crochet stitch. So you'll insert your hook into that same stitch space and work your double crochet. Chain one, skip one stitch and work a double crochet. You'll repeat the chain one, skip one, double crochet stitch all the way in the round. And once you've worked your way all the way in the round and on your last stitch, if you do not have a stitch to skip, that's totally fine. Just chain one as usual and work your slip stitch into that first stitch to join. Now for our next round, you'll chain one and you'll work two single crochet stitches into the chain space. You'll continue to work two single crochet stitches into every chain space all the way in the round. On your last chain space, you'll slip stitch into that first stitch to join and you'll chain one to secure and bind off. And this is how your finished neckline should look like. Now we'll be repeating the same pattern as we did on the neckline along the armhole. You insert your hook along the seam side, drop a loop. Chain one to secure. From here, we'll be working our single crochet stitches evenly across the row side while carrying along any excess tail You'll do this into every stitch all the way across in the round and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Once you've worked your way all the way in the round, you'll find that first stitch and work a slip stitch. Chain one to start the next round. And just like before, we'll be working a double crochet stitch into that same stitch space. We'll chain one, skip one, and work a double crochet. You'll repeat this pattern all the way in the round. On your last stitch, if you do not have any stitches remaining, that's totally fine. You'll just chain one as normal and work a slip stitch into that first stitch. You'll chain one to start the next round and you'll work two single crochet stitches into the chain space. And you'll repeat this into each chain space in the round. And once you've worked your way in the round, you'll slip stitch into the first stitch to close up the round and you'll chain one to secure. You'll bind off and you'll repeat the same pattern on the other sleeve. 
and once you worked on the other sleeve you are done this crocheted desert lily top is meant for any beginners wanting to make their first summer top it may look intricate but it's actually pretty easy and straightforward i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you did i would love to get a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and don't forget to check out all the other free tutorials in the link below i'll see you soon bye for now